Good evening, Internet. Uh, here to say a few words to the Comscape folks out there. Long-time observer, first-time commentor. And thematically, I thought it would be appropriate to work on some illustrations I'm doing for a tabletop game I got coming up in a little bit. I know that's uh, not the usual direction art and your all community takes, but hey, those PCs aren't going to eat themselves, so Game Master's got to do a little bit of work there. Anyways, uh, I noticed over the last week or so some interesting Twitter drama going on. I'm not really interested uh, in talking about the, side, the artist side of things. Uh, I think that um, over the last couple days, uh, people like Ethan Van Skyver and uh, Mike Miller, Timothy Lim, um, John Malin, the Brightweisers, they've all sat down and they've, they've hashed that out. And it's pretty cool that they've done it on live streams. Um, so kudos to you, artists of Comicsgate, uh, all those I've mentioned and all those who I haven't, uh, probably because um, I either haven't heard of your work or it slipped your mind. Um, no offense meant, but this is kind of extemporaneous. Anyways, they've hashed it out. Um, I don't think there's going to be any hard feelings, so kudos to you folks. Um, way to act like professionals. Now, there are people in the community who have had an odd response to um, the sudden proliferation of Indiegogos and Kickstarters. And I say this is an odd response because basically from, from moment one, certainly from the time I became aware of, of Comicsgate, I know that people like Douglas Ernst and, and Captain Frugal have been beating the drum for a while. But uh, when I first heard of Comicsgate, it was, like many people, through diversity in comics. And your boy Zach has always been insistent that uh, the people who read comics are customers. And they need to be treated like customers with professional standards of conduct and with an understanding that, you know, there can't be a comics industry without them. Now, here's the thing about customers. Uh, if you show up at, say, a used car lot and say, I want to buy a car, people are going to show up. They're going to try and sell you a car. Now, over the past week or so, uh, particularly on Twitter, I have seen some people expressing dismay that, that you know, Comicsgate picked up steam and then all of a sudden there were people like the Brightweisers, like Mike Miller, um, showing up and, and running Indiegogos and Kickstarters um, for comics where they had been content to work within um, mainstream publishing and diamond distribution in the past. And... Well, to that I say, that's Comicsgate succeeding. You wanted to be treated as customers. Um, and when somebody wants to market a product to customers, they go to where the customers are. Um, it doesn't make any sense for a person selling a product to stay in a business model or in a location or in a quote unquote community where the product isn't selling. And that's true of Marvel and DC and even the Indies. Uh, th we know they're not doing too well. That umbrella guy brings us the numbers on a regular basis. Um, so, is it is it bad that, that pros show up? Are they taking advantage of the comics gate community? No, they're not. They're doing exactly what their job is. They are showing up and bringing you the product you said you wanted. Um, when the old model failed, uh, someone tried something new, and once that new model was proven, uh, the people who were really interested in, in doing their job said, okay, in order to bring people 
the fun, apolitical adventure action stories that they've always wanted, we need to adopt this business model. Um, that's something which uh, they should be praised for, and I, I hope that we will continue to see people do that. Um, not just uh, the really big names, but people like Donald DeLay, who is a, a great artist and a fun guy on Twitter. And, you know, I know he's he had a failed pitch, um, Kill Blood, that looked pretty fun. And uh, I know he's pitching another story to Alterna. Good luck with that, Donald. Um, but I, I hope he tries out this new business model, too. I think it would be great if he could do that. And it, it really paid out for him. Um, they are doing that is not trying to take advantage of the comics gate community. It's not a danger to the comics gate community. That is a proof of the importance of the comics gate community. Um, and I know there are some people who are like, well, what if, what if one of these fails? Well, then it fails. Um, not everything is a smash hit. And just because something fails doesn't mean that the idea was a bad one. Uh, it may have just been at the wrong time. Uh, it may not have found the right audience. Um, there are a lot of reasons a thing can fail. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Um, these artisanal, as, uh, as Zach calls it, the artisanal approach to comics is a pretty good one. So, why are people so upset about this? Well, I think the biggest thing is, and, and a lot of, not a lot, I, I've seen a couple of people on Twitter um, kind of imply that they were hoping that Comicsgate would be, would be their audience. Um, and they put out products that didn't do as well as they hoped, or um, they just felt that they weren't, they weren't up to snuff now that there are people like Mike Miller and and the Bright Wisers um, stepping in and trying their hand at it. You know, and to those people, uh, two things to say. Um, first of all, grow up. Just because you've been involved in Comicsgate does not make you entitled to an audience any more than than. Marvel is entitled to an audience, or DC is entitled to an audience, um, simply because their comic book characters have been involved in comics fandom uh, since the beginning of the medium, basically. Second, um, comics gate can s grow and support projects of all sizes. Right now, we have a number of big blockbuster, summer blockbuster kind of projects going around. Things like Jawbreakers and Cyber Frog and Red Rooster. Um, and these all look pretty cool. Uh, that doesn't mean that everyone is going to spend their money on them. In fact, uh, of the three projects I named, uh, the only one that's actually getting dollars from me is Red Rooster. And that's, that's no slight to Jawbreakers, Lost Souls, or uh, Cyber Frog. They look like great products. They're just not quite my cup of tea. Um, Cyber Frog is, the lead character is a frog. And I've never been a huge fan of anthropomorphized animals as, as lead characters. Um, it's just not my cup of tea. On the other hand, uh, Jawbreakers, Lost Souls, well, I, I'm... I don't know what to say about that one. I mean, it looked great, but I just wasn't as interested in it. Now, Iron Sights, that's a, a very niche product, but I love the aesthetic and I love the visual storytelling. Um, and Mr. Canales is a good artist and I'm gonna, I'm gonna get Iron Sights. Um, so, just because there are these these big professional comics artists stepping in and and selling tons and tons of a book doesn't mean there isn't room for those smaller projects. 
Um, iron sights, you know, I would be very surprised if that broke a hundred thousand. Um, and it, it doesn't have the same degree of visual polish as, you know, even Jawbreaker's Lost Souls does. But it appeals to me more. And that's so that's where I'm going to spend my money. So if you want to be a creator and you feel like these pros have stepped in and um, snatched an opportunity out of your hands, well, you're wrong. There, there is a space for the smaller projects. You don't have to make $200,000 on a book in order for it to be a success. Point blank. I mean, I, I don't even know why you would think that. Most professional DC comic artists probably don't make that kind of gross on a book. So, yeah. Look for... Look for the niche in comics gate that is your audience um because as comics gate grows there's not going to be a hundred percent overlap between the things that interest everyone in i mean mim headroom reviews my little pony comic books for crying out loud uh no interest in reading them although i do find his reviews to be very funny and insightful so good on you mim um just don't it's very easy and I get it as as an amateur artist myself someone who um, would be tickled pink to actually uh, be able to make a semi-decent living just drawing a webcomic and hanging out my shingle on Patreon um, I, I understand the feeling of seeing you know, the big guns step in and and um, just knock it out of the park time and time again. Uh, but you know what? Well, it does humble me to see what they're capable of. I am still enthused by what they've managed to accomplish. So rather than throwing yourself a pity party, um, Show, show you got a big heart, congratulate them for what they've accomplished, and say, I want to be like that and start working towards it. Put, put in the hours. And um, maybe, you know what, maybe it wasn't the right call. Maybe um, that's not, that use of your talent is not going to be where it comes together. I've had that, I've come to that understanding a couple times in my life already. It sucks. Point blank. Terrible feeling. But, um, you got, you got to keep looking. You got to keep looking. And maybe it is where you need to, where, where you can, you know, bring your talents to bear. You just need to polish them some more. Nothing wrong with that. We know that Cyber Frog was Ethan's first project. And if you go back and you look at some of those old cyber frog drawings, um, kind of they were kind of rough. They were kind of rough. Um, so don't don't take what a Mitch Breitweiser, don't take what a Mike Miller does as prescriptive. Um, celebrate it as an achievement. And, and then say, what can I achieve? And if all you're trying to achieve is spreading salt on Twitter, well, that's, that's all you're ever going to achieve. Don't at me. Anyways, uh, just some thoughts for the Comicsgate people, um, especially the ones who are a little salty right now. Don't know if you'll ever see it, but if you did, I hope it gave you some perspective. Um, I hope you can get back on board with the cool things that are happening. Um, so yeah, we'll call this a video. Um, don't subscribe, don't like, I probably ain't gonna post anything else. Just wanted to say this. Take care.